Okay, so right now we're going to go through uh, chapter two word problem notes. Um, so with these, we're going to do some of them um, a little bit differently. Um, some of them uh, try to do different ways so we're able to understand what we're doing. So with this first problem, um, it says, suppose that the water level of a river is 34 feet and that it's receding by a rate of a half a foot per day. Write an equation for the water level L after D days. And in how many days will the water level be 26 feet? Okay. Um, so right here, again, um, the, uh, the word receding uh, means that it's going down at a rate of half a foot per day. And so um, one way of being able to do this and help you write an equation is for us to make a T-chart. So um, again, the two variables that we have are L and D. And so for the days that go by, our water level is going to change. And so whenever we make a T-chart, always go with a zero as our first number. And you can go zero, one, two, three. And then from there, I can read the question and think about it. So um, the first one, so uh, if, if we say no days have passed, so no time has gone by, what is the water level of the river? Uh, if we read in there, the starting point of the water level is 34 feet. So I can put 34. Um, and so then after one day, if it's going down at a rate of half a foot per day, then I would know that the next day I would just go down half a foot, so 33.5. The next day it would go down another foot, and so it would be at 33. And then the next day it would go down again, so it would be 32.5. And so what we've got here is we've got kind of two things that are, that are going to help us uh, write our equation. Here I've got my change going from one number to the next. So for each of those numbers, I know that the water level is going down, so negative 0 0.5. And then the other thing that's going to help me is this number right here, the number that's paired with the 0, that goes with the 0, um, that's going to be my starting point. So I've got my starting point and I've got my change. And so when I write my equation, uh, what I can do is I can have, you know, the water levels equal to blank D plus blank. My change is going to be the thing that goes with my variable. Um, that's my rate of change. That's my slope. Um, if I'm thinking of Y equals MX plus B. And then here, my starting point that's going to be my constant term, or that's going to be my y-intercept if, again, I'm thinking of y equals mx plus b. So my starting point is 34, and then my change is negative 0 0.5. And I highly suggest when, when you do word problems, use variables that make sense. Um, it, really, it really makes sense, and now I know where numbers are going in, because here when it says, in how many days will the water level be 26 feet, um, just think about it, which one's going to be water level, L or D? It's going to be L, so I can plug in this 26 in for L, so I can go 26 is equal to negative 0.5 D plus 34. I can subtract the 34 over to the other side to get, what, negative 8, yeah, negative 8 is equal to negative 0.5d, and then I can divide by negative 0.5. Um, negative divided by negative gives me a positive, so it should be 16, and I think the one thing that's important with this is know that we're talking about days. Just like that, okay? So again, I can start with a t-chart that's super helpful in getting me to write my equation, and then I can go ahead and, and go on. Um, second problem, I'm going to do the same thing. So Seth's dad is thinking of buying his son a, a six-month movie pass for $40. Uh, with the pass, matinees cost a dollar. If matinees are normally $3.50, how, how many times must Seth attend in order for it to benefit his father to buy the pass? So with this one, um, I'm comparing two things. I'm comparing um, the six-month movie pass and what matinees are normally, okay? 
So over on the left side, I'm going to go ahead and put the pass. And over here on the right hand side, I'm going to put no pass. And so with the pass over here, again, I'm talking about movies and money. So I'm going to make a T-chart with movies and money. Again, I'm going to do the same thing, 0, 1, 2. And so, uh, again, this is with the, the movie pass. So if, if we buy the movie pass and we go see zero movies, how much is that going to end up costing us? It's going to end up being $40 for just the pass. If we buy the movie pass and we go see one movie, again, with the pass, movies are a dollar. So I'm going to spend $41 total. $40 for the movie pass and $1 for the movie. If I go see two movies, it'll be $42. And again, same thing. Uh, my change here is I'm going up by one. Oops. And then my starting point is the number paired with my zero. So when I write an equation for uh, this, I go y is equal to, oopsie, nope, I don't want to use y's. I want to use dollars. Money is equal to blank M plus blank. Again, my change is here, $1. And then my starting point is here, which is 40. So it starts at $40 and I add a dollar for each movie. That should kind of make sense, okay? Over here on the other side with no pass. Oops, let me zoom in here. So again, I've still got my movies, zero, one, two. Um, so again, this is, I, I don't buy the movie pass. So if I don't buy the movie pass and I don't go see any movies, how much is that going to end up costing me? Well, it's going to cost me nothing. I don't buy the movie pass and I don't buy any movies. I don't spend anything. Um, I don't buy the movie pass and then I go and see one movie. That's going to cost me $3.50 because that's how much each movie is. I don't buy the movie pass and I go see two movies. That'll be $7 then. Again, my change here is I'm going up by $3.50 each time. And that should make sense because that's how much a movie costs. And then there's my starting point. Really, I don't have a starting point. So when I want to write an equation for this one, I can go my dollar is equal to blank M plus blank. Again, I've got my $3.50 for each movie, and then my starting point ends up being my zero. And so what I, when I want to compare these things, I want to see when these two things are going to end up being equal to each other. Um, and so I can, make, uh, I can make this equal to this, so I can make this right-hand side equal to this right-hand side. So when I plug this in, I can go uh, 1m plus 40 is equal to 350m. You could put the plus 0, but we really don't have to. Um, really, it's just set it up like this. So I can subtract the 1m over to the other side. Get 40 is equal to 250m and then divide both sides by 250. Sorry, I don't have a whole lot of room there, do I? So when I do that 40 divided by 250, I end up with 16 again. And this is 16 movies. So in a month, uh, Seth would have to go see 16 movies for the movie pass to end up being worth it. see this third one down here um and again this is where we can kind of start uh, you know maybe maybe skipping the t-chart and go right into just thinking about man what's my starting point what's my what's my change um so it says uh nicole's charging a flat fee of three dollars plus five dollars an hour think about this uh this flat fee right here as like gas money so just for showing up and driving over to the house, Nicole's getting $3 for gas money. And then she's going to end up making $5 per hour. 
So what I could do is I could do again, I could do money is equal to blank H plus blank. That change is happening per hour. And then I've got my starting point. So with this, um, again, the starting point is how much she makes just for showing up or before she works any hours. So she makes $3, and then she's going to make $5 for every hour that she works. Um, and this is where using variables that make sense are, is good. It says how much money will she make if she babysits for five hours? Again, if she is working five hours, I want to plug the five in for the H. It's five hours. Make the variables make sense. So dollar is equal to five times five plus three. So five times five gives me 25. 25 plus three gives me $28. She's gonna make $28 uh, for babysitting for five hours. And then I'm actually gonna go ahead and go down to, um, let's go down to number four. Uh, we'll do four and five. So number four says a plumber charges $25 for a service call plus $50 per hour of service. Write an equation, again, similar to this last one. So I've got dollar sign is equal to blank H plus blank. I've got my change, which is, again, how it's going to change for each hour that goes by. And I've got my starting point. So plumber charges $25 for a service call and then adds on $50 per hour. So $25 for each, uh, or sorry, $24 just for showing up, for showing up to the service call, and then $50 for each hour of work. Again, when it says here, I want how much, uh, how much do we get for 10 hours worth of work? I want to take that 10 hours and I want to plug it in for H. So I can go my money is equal to 50 times 10 plus 25. 50 times 10 gives me 500. 500 plus 25 gives me $525. And then the last one all the way down here. Uh, Rufus collects 100 pounds of aluminum cans to recycle. He plans to collect an additional 25 pounds for each week. I want to write an equation. We don't have to graph. Write, write an equation for the total pounds of cans after W weeks. How long will it take Rufus to collect 400 pounds of cans? Okay, so again, the pounds are going to change based on the weeks that go by. So when I write my equation, I can go P is equal to blank W plus blank. Once I'm there, again, my change and my starting point. The starting point is how much he has uh, to start with. So he's already collected 100 pounds. And then he wants to collect 25 more each week. Then I want to figure out um, how long is it going to take him to collect 400 pounds. Okay, So I can take the 400 and I can plug it in for the P for pounds. 25W plus 100. I can subtract the 100 to get 300. I'm going to have to go over here. And then divide both sides by 25. It should give me 12. And remember that what the W stands for, it's 12 weeks. 